Right, crack on, Gromit. Let's crack on. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a glorious day in Lincolnshire. We've had summer for like the past three or four days. It is Pistons the Podcast episode. Well, I've got a Jakeman's. Yeah, you're crunching away. Um, Famous. It is episode, I don't know, eight or nine. But in this episode, it's basically uh, our July roundup. We've had a very busy July. We thought that June was busy. Well, you wait until you hear this. Um, it's the 1st of August tomorrow, meaning that uh, you're officially in holiday mode. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I've just realised I've got to get some gaffer tape. What do you need gaffer tape for? I've got to put something over that Berg house on your shirt. Oh, yeah. To say... do on Channel 4. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Home's under the hammer. I've got a big, big black tape. No, I can wear this. It's okay. Okay. Uh, you all right? Yeah. Good. Had a good July? Could have been better. It was busy, wasn't it? Could have been better. Let's talk about it then, and we'll start as we mean to go on with K11 Micra update. If you watched the previous podcast, it was potentially game over for the Micra. You found some... Well, we thought it was catastrophic rust, but actually it turned out to be non-structural cosmetic rust. Tell us about the rust. She was a bit rusty round her ear, bless her. Mm. So anyway, we've stuck a patch on it. <laughs> so in the last podcast, you said, I'm not fixing it, mate. I've had enough. I can't be doing with uh, with welding. I know, but you pulled a long face like you did when his little boy. And I wanted to take it to the... I don't think that happened. I think, no, it didn't. <laughs> I think that's a lie, actually. I, I, in fact, what I think I said was, OK, let's stick mm. it back in the garage and we'll come back to it next year. I know, it just seems a waste. Um, got it out. <laughs> so you got the welding done. And I suppose the micro update is, it's got an MOT. Um, it's been to Neil. Neil has given it uh, a MOT and it's on the road. So now Just I shall be driving it. Let's hope it gets us to Rustival and back without overeating or... Yeah, so we will, best will in the world, be taking the mm. K11 Micra Sport to the Rustival 2. Hooray! Um, what I need is a beaver tail thing to follow you in in case it needs recovery. Mm. So here's my plan. I think we need to spend the next month driving it. I think you do. To make sure that there aren't any big problems and iron out any issues. Yeah. So I think coming up uh, in the next month or so before Rustival will be some test drive yeah, videos. Yeah, Mrs JC from work in it. We can, oh, <laughs> yeah, we'll have Mrs JC in it uh, with some cleaning videos. Can you videos. cover that up? There's a scantily clad young woman there. Oh yeah, we well, oh dear. I don't want that sort of excitement. We don't want that excitement. This time on a Wednesday on morning. A Wednesday morning. Um, We'll be doing some cleaning videos, and I think we'll do a cost video as well. Oh. So how much the project cost? How much it cost me and it costs you? Yeah. But it costs me more than it costs you? Probably. Yeah. So micro update, mm. if you have been following the micro uh, project, is it's on the road, it's been welded, it's got an MOT, it's going to Rustival. I'm happy with that. Thank you very much for your hard work. Now listen to me, I've just realised. What? I've done some performing the other Sunday, the Saturday. What podcast? Yeah, yeah. We've done a, we did a live yeah, I'm podcast. Go, I'm going to want double pay this month. Well, we'll talk about the live podcast when we get to uh, point four yeah. on my list here. But yes, well, my agent's going to be in touch for you. <laughs> <laughs> just, I've blocked just text your mum. I'm going to say I've blocked her. <laughs> um, so, uh, Micra, happy with the project? Yeah, it's nice to see it up and running. Didn't didn't cause us as much grief in the end as we expected. I think the only thing I'm thinking it might have, it might blow a radiator. Really? Yeah, because it's been stood for a long while, hasn't it? And oh. we've flushed it out. And Thankfully, I've got That's the only recovery. thing I can think could probably go wrong. Yeah? Yeah. Or someone crashes into it. That'd be bad news, wouldn't it? Uh, we didn't film too much of the micro project because I was at work uh, paying for an upcoming holiday and you kind of on, just right? cracked on uh, whilst you could. So thank you for doing the micro. More micro stuff to come, but the takeaway there, it's on the road. Moving on then to something that you didn't even get involved in uh, and something that caused umbrage, shall we say, on the channel a little bit, is the Peugeot E3008. You mention an EV and there's two lots of... Yeah, Where's that scantily exactly. clad? Where's that scantily clad young woman? Exactly. So the EVs uh, came to the channel. We, we tested a E3008 and it caused... 
conversation, shall we say, between those on the EV camp who have got an EV, like an EV, and think this is the best thing in the world, and for those who detest them, who are not EV fans, who have potentially never driven them and don't like them. Um, I said at the start of our test drive, because Mrs. John Cooper and I took one for a little range test, it was non-scientific and that I didn't uh, think it would do my needs and it caused a bit of a discussion, which is good. I think that's good. Uh, discussion as opposed to name calling. It's diversity, isn't it? Exactly. Are you sold on EVs? They've got a place, yeah. Yeah, um, and that's the thing. It would be wrong of me to sit here and preach to the choir about EVs because actually I know nothing about them. Especially, the way I ask it, if you still had what you used to call it economy seven, cheap rate electricity at yeah. night, and I was travelling 20 miles to work, but brilliant, wouldn't it? I think octopus energy and play, people like that do a special but EV just a jolly old job, wouldn't it? But I'm not going to sit here and protesteth about EVs. I wouldn't have to go to Scotland in one, though. Do me head in, that would. I mean, you you take the breaks that you need. And yeah, but I just don't like to buy that expensive coffee. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so not the it's I was not having the this discussion with a chap of a similar age to me this morning at the gym, and he says, no, I'm not paying nine quid for a coffee. He stopped somewhere and it was nine pounds. Nine pounds mm. for a coffee? Might have been Surrey prices. Maybe. Anyway, so we did a test drive of the Peugeot E3008. That video was on the channel. Um, my takeaway from that car was massive car. Big old thing. Small on the inside, which is the alternative or the opposite of what I would have liked, which would be small car, big feeling on the inside. Um, that video is on the channel, and then Mrs. John Cooper and I went for a trip out to Skegness. That video is also on the channel. Again, non-scientific, but... Um, it's a posh car though, wasn't it? Oh, it's a lovely car. Yeah, and a lot of people in the comments have said, I've just, just ordered one. So they clearly, clearly are selling. Yeah, yeah. Um, check it out if you haven't already done so. I'll be doing some more work with Taylors of Boston uh, soon, test driving uh, some Vauxhalls and a Peugeot van. Van content. What, well, little van or big van? Big van. A big van? Big Peugeot van coming soon. Then we spent uh, a whole weekend MOTing cars getting ready oh, for right, yeah. the Festival of the Unexceptional. First and foremost, the Proton Black Knight. Yeah. Uh, that came to visit. What did you have to do to the Black Knight? Some rack boots. Mm. That was a pain in the bum because my supply supplier gave me the wrong stuff. Yeah, so the Proton Black Knight needed both, did it two new front steering rack boots, and I had in stock what I thought were mm. rack boots for the Black so what Knight. what turned into a half an hour of simple job it was a pain in the couple bum. of days. Well, it was like I had to run off the next morning to go find some, and they've got universals on now, and I'm not happy with it. No, I'm so not happy with them. I don't like them universal boots. It didn't fit overly well. They they, they'll do the job. Yeah, it keeps them all out. But it's not OEM spec. It is doesn't it? look so nice. No, uh, and actually, when you're going around corners, it sort of concertinas mm. into itself like a big accordion. But the good people at Eurocar Parts have the stuff in stock. Excellent. So well done. Thanks to the team at Eurocar Parts who I don't normally rate, if I'm honest. Uh, they had them in stock, and the Black Knight... Well, the good thing about it was, it was the day when all the computers went down, and went in, and it says, I ordered them. I says, yeah, good. <laughs> oh, I see, so we'd got them. Because they'd got them. a payment system, but they couldn't access their... Uh, which I can't grasp the fact that they can't go onto their system to find the parts, but I could go on their website and order them. Mm. That's bizarre, isn't it? It is bizarre. So we got that done, and the Proton Black Knight went for an MOT, and of course, thumbs up, it was a um, advisory free pass. Another year, I think we did something like... It's only been for an MOT into the blinking um, I was going to say, show. I think we only did 12 miles in it last year. No, we silly Billy, it's been to the show, hasn't it? Oh, a bit more than that then. Yeah, of course it has. Yeah. It's been, but it's got 100 mile on it since last oh, MOT. Oh, crikey, I'm oh, sweating. <laughs> uh, right, so that was the MOT for the Black Knight. Mm. What? I'm just thinking about something. What are you thinking? Door shuts. Oh, the soul of a car. Oh, oh yeah, that's, yeah, we'll talk about that. Mm. I thought he was talking about door shuts, which leads us in nicely to the next thing we worked on, yeah. which was actually a whole weekend's worth of work. Um, sadly, yeah. one of the videos that we filmed, your microphone malfunctioned. Did it? So, um, 
It's Can it, you just give it subtitles? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of a voiceover. Yeah. This was the Proton 1.5 SE, the white saloon. And as always, a pre-MOT check turned mm. into two days of hard work. Um, the mechanical work we had to do on that was some brake slides. That was it. Yeah. yeah. That was the mechanical work. Replace the brake slide rubbers. How long did that take? Hour. So why did we spend two solid days working on the Proton White? I don't know. SE? I'll tell you. Uh, we cleaned all underneath it. I decontaminated all the paintwork with elbow grease, degreaser. Got it looking the best it's ever got. Door shuts was a disgrace. Yeah, the door shuts are still a they disgrace. They still look like the side of a fish pond. We replaced the radio. Um, we replaced some door... What are they called? Checks. Door Still checks. Some more checks doing. Yes, I know. Is the noise Stop talk. talk. <laughs> yes, I know. Door check straps need doing. The inside, see? It's all in that door shut area, you see. Door shuts are Potential us. Potential to detail in your door shuts. Uh, what else did we do? As I said on one of your videos, it's like looking into the soul of a car. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we painted the side strips and the wheels. Well, so oh, the, yeah, of course, we were messing about cleaning wheels and... So the Proton 1.5 SE White Saloon, two videos coming up. Uh, one I need to do. do it drove lovely, you know. Yeah, you took it to the Festival of the Unexceptional. It really was a pleasure to drive. We'll talk about that in a second. Hold that thought, because also you killed a pigeon. But um, <laughs> we, we took it for an stopped MOT. The pigeon. Uh, we certainly stopped Dave the <laughs> pigeon. We took it for an MOT, and again, Neil said, this is lovely. But and I think your exact words were, it has the makings of a good car. Mm. More work still to come on the 1.5 SE, probably next year now. But uh, we've got it up and running and we're slowly tinkering with that. Which leads us on then nicely to the Festival of the Unexceptional, which is the highlight of my year. Genuinely is. Uh, you nearly killed your dad walking him around there for blooming 10 hours. A busy old day. So we left here at... I don't know, half five in yeah, the morning. Half five we left here, mate. We got up at four. We took two cars. We took the Proton Black Knight, which was on a special, I don't know, winner's semicircle of stuff. Uh, and we took the white SE. So tell us about the drive there. It's lovely. We put some fuel in it. Yep. Got some E5. Yep. And we trundled off. And about 10 miles from the Grimsfort Castle, this silly pigeon looked up and went, oh my God, it's a proton, instead of flying away, so he hit me. Yeah, and I wish you could have filmed my reaction in the car behind well, mine you. Mine and all, I did that. <laughs> because my reaction was, oh, bugger, that's going to have damaged something. Either <laughs> Dave only glanced it. Or the light protector. My worst fear, however, was it damaged the windscreen. But it didn't. It sort of glanced off. And it definitely killed the pigeon. But no. for any children watching, the pigeon, Dave, is... Dave was just stunned. Is recovering. Stunned. And he went away and says, well, I've just, I've just seen a proton. Did you enjoy the Festival of the Unexceptional? I enjoyed it, but it became into a bit of a marathon in the end. It was a busy old day. Yeah, it was. It was uh, just walking round and it was hot and we dehydrated. Yeah. But you we slept well. We just see, well, it was bigger than, I think it's the biggest festival there ever been. Nearly 2,000 cars attended. It was uh, massive. Yeah, huge day. And, you know, I was sort of doing a bit of a think about it myself. And it was nearly all sort of 80s, 90s, early Not 2000s Not many cars. 60s, 70s cars. Not many. Which I think is brilliant because it shows mm. that people are appreciating things like the Peugeot 406 estate that we saw. Oh. But also, I don't know if you noticed, a lot of the owners were youngsters. Yeah. Young people, younger than me. Well, it's a different mindset to your average classic car show, isn't it? Yes, so we had a great time. Thanks as ever to Haggerty for um, asking us to be there as special guests. We did some stuff with Sustained Fuels, which is coming. Uh, they, um, I'm intrigued to know more about that, really. Yeah, well, hang, hold that thought, because if you watch the channel, it's coming up. You can hear all about it. Well, I want to know how they make it. And... I don't think they're going to tell you that, because oh. else we're going to be making it in the shed. And oh, it's a bit like it. home brew, is it? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know if it's home brew, but yeah, I think we'll be, um, ah. we'll be selling it. Um, Moonshine. So that was good. The winner, which has 
caused some controversy on the oh, internet. It was, it was a spectacularly lovely thing. Was the Toyota Hilux. I don't care what they say, it was still a spectacularly lovely thing. So, I'm not going to get into the politics of it. We're not. Everyone else has an opinion. Uh, some people think that it was a nut and bolt restoration and that the story uh, may have been twisted a little bit. So I can get some people's comments about the car. It was better than new underneath. But nothing looked out of place, did it? Uh, it was beautiful. Mm. It was a lovely thing. Um, obviously, we're not judges of the Festival of the Unexceptional. No. We have to... Um, I've got my own opinion, and my own opinion is... My criteria is a bit different to that. My criteria is a bit different, and mm. would it have been my winner? No, it would not have been my winner. But I think in the other video that we've filmed, we've looked at it and gone, Christ, that's a it's good, good car. Um, I think what doesn't help, and what's caused a, a little bit of confusion, is the word concourse. In yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So people are looking at things like the Citroen, and spotting rust spots yeah. and saying, well, that shouldn't be in the concourse area. But mm. also, let's consider the story. It's a survivor. It's a family car you don't mm. see anymore. It was dragged out from behind an industrial estate and tested and, and used. That, to me, is a family survivor. Yes, it's got some rust spots on it, but it's an original car. So it's, it's all subjective, isn't it? Um, is it called it, when, Concours de l'Ordinaire? Yeah, it's not Concours de Elegance, is it? Like you have at Pebble Beach in America, exactly. where they've brought these, I don't know, these American vehicles out and they're restored to absolute mega perfection. Yeah. You know, two million dollar restoration. But it has caused a little bit of chatter, shall we it's say. It's not Concours de Elegance, it's Concours de Ordinaire. Amongst the community. And. A worthy winner. Well done to that gentleman. We're not oh, the uh, spectacular. We're not the judges. Um, the judges clearly liked it. And well, you didn't need the mirrors to look underneath it because you could just lay you could just lay back. underneath it. it which was, which it brings us on there. nicely, by the way, to why I've got a copy. Of, ignore the fact that it's the sun. Uh, we will say nothing about that. But um, in the uh, in the centre centerfold today <laughs> in the sun my baby da, is da, 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 da. my angel is a centerfold there is a massive write-up about the festival of the unexceptional spot the fat lad in the middle with his uh, with his proton black knight there he is uh, there's a wonderful it is a one well is it a wonderful write-up uh, it, it's a write-up it's interesting uh, it's an interesting write-up about the festival of the unexceptional mm. i'll read you just a little excerpt no, story no, no, no not all of story me, me, time me, me, now me, 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 john coopland 33 wrong uh, owns the sole 1989 proton 1.5 black knight left in britain i wrong. hope somebody didn't turn up with one that's a little bit upset you yeah, yeah. Uh, the car was made in Malaysia and had seats stuffed with coconut husks. Correct. A total of 201 were made, one for each Proton dealership in the UK. Correct. John, a Lincolnshire detective, incorrect, says the DVLA and Proton have confirmed that all the rest have been scrapped. He found the car with just 3,600 miles on the clock. Incorrect. Uh, in a garage where the owner had kept it untouched for more than 30 years. He entered it into the 2020 Festival of the Unexceptional, which had been cancelled due to COVID. Correct. But won top prize the following year. Also correct. John says, give me something that's quite quaint and boring over a supercar any day. I did say that. Uh, I get excited when I see a Perodua Kalisa, uh, which at £5,000 was once the cheapest new car in Britain rather than a Lotus. I also said that. I think, the, I think the actual quote I said was, I get excited when I see a Produa Kalisa uh, as opposed to a Lotus XL, which is what I said. Um, the event is a whole host of like-minded people coming together to enjoy cars that don't normally get the spotlight. When I'm going out in the morning, there's a man comes trundling past in a little day you. He's, mm. going to, he's going to work. Yeah. I'm going to have to say, excuse me, can you stop going to work in this? <laughs> Let me have it. So that was the Festival of the Unexceptional. Your winner from the Concours de l'Ordinaire was a uh, Daihatsu. Yeah. And mine was a Subaru Justy. Mainly was, because it was purple. They were equally lovely, weren't they? All the cars in the Concours were, were worthy oh, it was of being there. Best... Best ever, best ever, mate. I've never seen anything like it. Festival of Unexceptional then, videos are on the channel, uh, including your reaction to the Concorde de l'Ordinaire and coming soon, our highlights. Uh, I've had to edit it um, heavily because you said some uh, interesting things about people's sills. And also, oh. what had you been eating? 
Because you were windy. <laughs> well, it was a hot day. <laughs> how does that how does yeah, that work? The gas is internally expanded. <laughs> there's, I had to equalise. There's part of the video Can't where help it. You, Why don't tell the world? You audibly disturb a gen gentleman from his slumber. I think he was no dozing off and he suddenly thought, Christ, is that thunder? <laughs> uh, I've had to edit it out, but um, the outtakes are brilliant. Anyway, Festival of the Exceptional 2024. Thumbs up from me, as ever. A great show. And it thanks was. to the team at Haggerty for uh, inviting the us. The concourse was better than I've ever seen it. Like I say, I haven't been that many times, but it's better than I've ever seen it. Stepping it up. Oh, it's just going up every year. It's just it's going up busy. another level. Which leads us on nicely to what's in the workshop. Da, 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 da. Which uh, <laughs> is this. By 1949, Armstrong Sidley Lancaster. You remember I said to you about two weeks ago, I'm not doing anything with the Lancaster this year. Yeah. It's staying in the garage. It won't come out. But you were sneaky. I might take it for a test. I, um, I, I, I resent that. Sneaky. I might take it for a test drive and uh, see how we get on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what happened, viewers. It's in the way for him getting the Black Knight out of the for the festival. Mm. So he thought, oh, I'll take this round to Dad's and he'll probably keep it in the shed for a couple of weeks to tinker with it. And it's out of his way. I know what his game was. I've been called out on my plan. Uh, it he's wasn't. It wasn't. He's sneaky. It wasn't my main <sighs> uh, motive, but it did cross my mind. He's a sneaky little fella. The way that it works is, in a, my three-car garage, we've got four cars, so they're all sort of wedged in on dollies. So you have to move this out to get the others out uh, from one of the. Uh, one of the doors, so as I'll you take say. Dad for a ride in this. He'll find something wrong and say, "Leave it here." Well, I did. I did have it out and about, and actually, there was something there catastrophically was something wrong. wrong with the car. If broke. you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that there were. Well, you described it as a death trap. It was. Uh, so some work has had to come from the Armstrong Sidley. It's in here at the moment, and we are filming a series, which will uh, come to the channel in September. So a Armstrong Sidley series, and I mean a series is coming to the channel in September. Why September? Well, I'm on holiday in September, and so I don't want to leave you guys with no content, so we've decided that you can watch Dad restore or work on this post-war old girl in September. So there's videos such as our initial test drive of when we found the problem, videos of us discussing the problem, a strip down, a repair, update videos. There's sort of a whole month's worth of content coming. Uh, to keep you busy. I don't in think the, your demographic of viewers be very interested in Armstrong Siddle. It is. No, I think you're right. Uh, I think a lot of people aren't interested in the Armstrong no. Siddle, and historically on the channel, videos about this don't do very well. But if you want to do some tinkering, this is the sort of thing because you're always got some tinkering to do. But I'll tell you what people like seeing, and that's you doing old school mechanicking. Oh right. And you've had to do a lot of old school mechanicking on this. There's been a lot of filing and welding and. Grinding and polishing. And yeah. I don't want to discuss it too no. much because, as I say, it is coming to the channel in September. A lot of make, do and mend. Because it's not the sort of thing you can nip down to Euro car parts and get parts for. <laughs> We've had to be a bit uh, creative. No. Um, but death trap, death trap, literally a death oh, trap. It was. You death. actually condemned it and said, don't drive this on the road, uh, is being repaired. Coming soon. Armstrong Sidley. Well, actually, we're filming some content on it today. Uh, anything else you want to say about the Armstrong Siddeley before we carry on? If anybody wants to do some tinkering, have one of these in your shed. There'll always be something to do. Or you're running around trying to find a part. It's made me realise just how difficult it is keeping a vintage car on the road yeah. in, rela in, in comparison to a retro car. If it weren't for the owners club with this thing, I think it'd be impossible. Yeah, I agree. Because they've got really rare stuff. They've got the monopoly on it, though. They can charge whatever they want. And it yeah. is blooming expensive for stuff. At least you can, at least you can get it. Brake cylinder. Yeah. 200 think, quid. If you, start, if you really start wanting to be running cars of this era, you need to be getting yourself some more engineering skills so you can actually make a lot of components yourself. Yeah, which I don't have. Which is probably why this sort of thing are not interesting to people of my age now. Anyway, 
Uh, that's the Armstrong Siddeley, it's coming soon. Let me know in the comments below if you're looking forward to that or if you're thinking, oh Christ, I'm gonna turn off for the whole of September. Um, oh, I've got a present for you. Excellent. Because I was busy yesterday in probably the hottest day of the year, uh, clearing out a local garage. I've got, in fact, I've got two presents for you. I can see you haven't cleaned them. I've got the patina already. I'll show you the first one. Da, da, Excellent. Da, da, da. Here is some signage That's posh, isn't it? that I uh, rescued from a local garage. As I say, a local garage is closed down. I've got lots of stock for selling online to keep the fleet going. Um, but I, uh, I nabbed like this off the wall. Yeah. Here you are. Should we put that in the front room with your mum? <laughs> I don't think you'll get away with that. I don't think she'll like that, will she? Oh, that's posh, isn't it? Show everybody your sign. Du, 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 du. Because I also got you, as well, this one. Ah. Ta -da. What Hours I think of this business. is now. As I, as I said to you earlier about something, we really ought to have an outside toilet. We could put this in there. <laughs> uh, you've also got an hours of uh, business service department sign. What do you reckon of that? Yeah, well, we open at 10. Yeah. We have lunch. We go for lunch at 12. Yeah. And we come back at 2. Yeah. So we're on and then it's, yeah. it's, then it's continental hours. <laughs> Is it continental hours? from lunch? 2 till 4. So and basically, we've only got a four hour day. I'm okay with that. Considering I'm not paying you very much, uh, I think a four-hour day is uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Problem is, it should say, bank holidays, we're always open. Mm. We, we get a lot done on bank holidays, don't <laughs> bank we? Bank holidays, we're always open. Uh, so, yeah, what do you think to your signs? I like that one. Oh, and I also got you a Jubilee clip holder, which I you've know. already had, and it's on the wall. I had to go to screw fix to get some more clips to put on it to make it look <laughs> symmetrical. Um, you he said so I'm how... sad. He said I'm sad. Loser. He called, called me a loser. loser. But also, I appreciate that. He called me a blinking loser. That's my main objective today, was to get that book rack filled up. With I clips. rescued a lot of vintage parts yesterday from this garage mm. clearance. Like 200 oil filters. Yes. Uh, air filters, belts, all sorts of stuff. It's going to keep me busy, let's put it that way. Uh, but it all funds yeah. the uh, the channel, and it all funds the project. So if you want some rare parts, go on his uh, eBay channel. Yeah, yeah, search, uh, I don't know, Proton stuff on eBay, and you'll find it. Uh, anyway, um, I saw a man in a Proton hat at the festival, and I forgot to tell you. He wasn't in a Proton, though. Um, he was one of the people with the... Bond books and stuff, I think. And he was wearing a proton hat. There was definitely a proton hat at the Legend. Uh, if you are wearing a proton hat, uh, or want a proton hat, head on over to eBay, type in proton hats, and the official UK stockist of proton hats are here. They're nine ninety nine delivered, get one bought. Um, maybe I'll put the link. Link is in the description to proton hats. What are hats. the washing instructions for the Black Knight t-shirt? Because me and your mum don't know how to wash it. Put, put it, it in just... the washing machine. Oh, what the Black Knight no, come off fine. the front? No, 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 I, okay. says, I think, oh, that's all right. We well, were wearing get, specific black I'll get your mum to hand wash mine, I think. I hand washed my Nissan Micra t-shirt that I had made about 15 years ago and ruined it. So I didn't wear it. Did you? Yeah, it got all yellow in the, uh, in the wardrobe. So I soaked it in vanish. And yeah. The print vanished. So, yeah, devastated. So let's talk about things that are coming up in August then. Because in the last podcast, I said to you, you're having a month off in August. Yeah, I'll bet. Mm, kind of. We've only got some little things to do in August. I'll bet I'll get a month off. Uh, little bits and pieces. Uh, I'm going to get a job again, it's easier. <laughs> uh, the A4 B5. Yeah, we need to get him tidied up. We need to sort that out. We've bought some side moulding strips for the bottom of the doors. They came from Lithuania or somewhere. Um, so we're going to put them on. That's a job. That's a video. What was the many at the festival? What, A4 B5s? Mm. Two? maybe they're fast becoming rare beasts and actually i saw one for sale recently on car and classic and thought well if if they're worth that much then i'd better cash in now i think it was like three and a half grand for a tatty one eh? yeah i've got a tatty one in the garden better get that silver one because it's not tatty no it's just needs some tlc yeah have you got them blooming window things safe yes that's what we also need to do we need to replace the window that you broke it happened when while I was driving it. I didn't break it. Mm. 
It would have broken sometime. Yes, exactly. So Audi A4 window needs repairing and the rumble strips need doing. Yeah. Day's work? Yeah. That's coming soon. Uh, and then it's never ending, I'm afraid. The purple smart, don't panic, it's not broken, uh, is ready for an MOT. So we need to just do a quick MOT pre-check on that. I need to put some new tyres on it. Yeah, put some tyres on it and check the lights. Uh, check the lights and send it to Neil. That's what we're doing in August, nothing else. Apart from... Well, I can assure you, I know for sure that that would purple smart. It's not got a lot wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> you hope. You hope. Uh, there's also some videos we're going to film, some little videos that are pretty easy to do. Uh, the cost of the Rover 75 restoration project. People have been asking me uh, how much it cost and to talk about that. So we're going to do that. We're going to get the Rover 75 here, talk about how much it cost. I'm I've talking had... about think, Rover 75s. I went up to one and I looked at its sill and yours didn't look as bad as that and I put my thumb through it. Just to clarify, yeah. you didn't put the, your thumb through the I one... I didn't touch it. No, no. <laughs> so when you say you put your thumb through it, you didn't put the one through the thumb at the festival. You put no. Through, yeah, just to clarify... I don't think I should be very popular with the mm. owner, should you? I don't think we'd be putting that on uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, there was one that was a little bit crusty, but... Because I've been going around looking at them now, because it interests me. I had to edit out the video uh, multiple times where you've been looking at people's sills on their Rover 75. I've left a few in, but it got to a point where... Well, I'm just Half intrigued. the video was you looking at sills. I'm just intrigued to see how many are like it. <laughs> well, all of them, as we've clearly well, the pointed out. Um, so that's coming. Do you want to have a quick guess as to how much the Rover 75 restoration cost? The whole project, including the cost price of the car? Including my labour? Mm. No, including... Oh. Yeah, no, I don't know what's going on today. It's Bob the Blinking Builder. Yeah, Bob the Builder's here. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, by sticking a load of nails in it. Um, to buy the car, well, you see, is, da, 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 £2,000. Oh, find out in the video, which is coming soon, sorry. <laughs> uh, and then similar with the Smart 451 restoration video, including the cost of the car. Oh, my giddy aunt. Oh, John boy, we spent more on the engine than the car cost. On the, on the Smart? 451? The oh, you mean the GHD? Yeah. Purple, the orange Smart, not the purple Smart. The orange Smart? Mm. Yeah, we didn't spend a lot on it, not money-wise, did we? I mean, what? I spent 300 quid on an exhaust. Yeah, but you, you're the sort of person that will spend more on your door mats than you will on, on your floor mats than what you will on parts for the brakes. That actually happened. Um, he moans about blooming 90 quid for some brake components, and then you'll spend that on some floor mats. Floor mats make a for car. Anyway, the cost of the 451 restoration is coming too. It's not all about money, it's about the, it's about another one saved. But people want to know. Oh the, oh, the 451 cost me more than it's worth. The Orange Smart. Did it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely cost me more than it's worth. Well, we didn't do that much to it. What did we do to it? Well, I don't want to spoil the video, but no. the car cost 1,600 quid. Yeah. The exhaust was 300 quid. Yeah. Then we threw some floor mats in it, which were 50 yeah, quid. Yeah, we'll take the floor mats out. Then, then some all sorts of bits and pieces, trim, another 50 quid. Then we did some brakes, which were like 50 quid. Then right. something else, which was 100 quid. And the car's worth 1,800 quid. Mm. So that was a late, that was a project of love because I wanted it as a mm. daily driver. So Sir Alan Sugar will fire you then? Oh yeah, I'm not going to make money on that car. You're fired. Whereas the Rover 75, you know, we know what the car cost, which again mm. will be revealed in the video, mm. and we spent £90 on floor mats. You always have to have some blinking floor mats. You've got to have the right OEM spec floor well, mats. Well, people was car. kind to us with that. We sent us parts and all. Oh yeah, things, absolutely. Yeah, and I've, I've discussed know, that. In, we we'll were blinking in lucky with that. Yeah, um, but again, going through my garage stuff that I've been. Yeah, you got seventy five head gasket. Seventy five head gasket no, kit. No, was it head gasket kit? Timing belt kit Timing and all that kit. sort of stuff. But anyway, it's done and dusted. And actually, a lot of the YouTube revenue will be taken into account in these videos. Ooh. So I've worked out how much we've earned on the videos. 
and taking that off the project. Don't, I'm not involved, I'm, I'm in the money side of things. No. I'm just the free labour. Well, we don't do it for cash, do we? But um, it's interesting and people will... Well, I don't know, I'd like to do. Do what? Supplement my pension. Well, I can't afford to blooming pay you, so if, we, if we're going to get into that territory, then we might as well stop everything now. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else? Hey, wheel it out. I'm, I better want to spread the word. I better oh. sell these. These are 30 quid each. Um, anything else you want to discuss on the podcast before we finish? Yes. I had a phone call last night. I don't like this because this isn't scripted. Your no. mum was at Auntie Steph's. Yes. Merrin's come home, wants her clutch adjusting. Right. Now, mum and Auntie Steph are probably, and Merrin are probably going to adjust the clutch cable on her Toyota Igo. Because Uncle Carl can't do it because he's poorly. Sorry. Can you imagine? Just to clarify, <laughs> my mum yeah. and her sister yeah. and, and my, I don't know, 19-year-old cousin. No, she's 20-something well, now. Are going to adjust the clutch adjust cable. A clutch cable. <laughs> well, I've told them to look on YouTube. There's a fantastic video of a chap showing you how to do it. Um, this is some content we're missing out on. I think that's going to end I reckon up they'll wait for coming Ryan to Uncle to Pete. Around. Yeah, well, exactly. No, no, there's Ryan. He's doing it for a living now, isn't he? Oh, well, there you go. Uh, good cars, though, Toyota Igos. Yeah. Hey, um, I shouldn't poo-poo it. If it's, if, if it's on YouTube, you can probably learn how to well, do it. He's got a clutch cable in his hand, and he sort of shows you the components. He says, oh, you need to unscrew this here. Then he shows you how to put your hand down the side of the battery and do it. There you are. So uh, if they can't fix it by looking at that... It's not something I'd want to do. So. Of course it is. It's just stick mm. your hand down there and unscrew a knob. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, anything else you want to discuss? Yeah. What? What are we going to do with this? We'll discuss this off camera, shall we? What? Shall we discuss it in the green room? What, what, what do we need to discuss? But you're getting some bits for it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll discuss that in the green that's room. In, that's in a separate video. One thing I do want to say is over 9,500 subscribers now. Uh, we are winging our way to 10,000. You will get a silver play button. I will get you a silver play button, but that means 100,000 subscribers. So uh, if you aren't subscribed, please do. But there's a space ready on the wall for your silver YouTube play button. I better leave a space for it then. I better not put a sign up. Yeah, so if you uh, fancy being one of the 90,500 90, people that aren't subscribed yet, what are you playing at? Um, is, if, it, is it... Well, I want it outside so the public can see it. Well, no, I think but you put it in. I don't know where you put it. Oh. Yeah. But I, I want... I, I think you'll put it on your mantelpiece. No, 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 no. I want to get Mrs. you... Mrs John Cooper and say, oh, bring that home to our house. John. Mrs John Cooper will say, get that out of my life. Um, I want to get you a YouTube play button. So help the cause, Dad's YouTube play button. Mm. Hashtag tat on the wall. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please. If you haven't already subscribed and you want to help us get that YouTube play button, which will never happen, it's never happening, uh, then <laughs> hit the subscribe button. Comment down below. What are you looking forward to? September and the Armstrong Sidley project, yay or nay? Um, Festival of the Unexceptional, did you go? What did you enjoy? And uh, what are you looking forward to seeing? I just want to say to all the people we bumped into at the festival who come across to have a word, thanks for coming and having a word with us. It was a pleasure to see you all. Well, you're a superstar now, mate. <laughs> now they recognise you, then they say, oh, 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 that's, oh, I can see John. Oh, there's his dad. There's John's dad. <laughs> no, genuinely, actually, yeah, it was a humbling day. It was nice, because lots know, of people come and say There's lovely that. folks, aren't they? Yeah, nice people. Nice people. Some of them felt as though you could see that there's some, I don't want to bother you too much. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, come and say hello. You are the expert and the legend. I am just the guy that puts it all together. But um, yeah, if you are watching, thank yeah, you very all much. The people that come to see us, nice Good. to see you. Till next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Thanks for watching. There's going to be a thumbs up from Dad. I knew it. There you go. See ya. That's all I do. Thanks for watching this latest episode of Pistons, the podcast. Another one is coming shortly. But if you haven't caught up yet, there's previous episodes on this page now. And don't forget to hit subscribe to always get caught up with the latest podcast.